This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue to look at this massive global crisis, the Mediterranean Sea has become one of the world's deadliest borders as more than 340,000 people displaced by war and violence have attempted to reach Europe this year. We go now to the coast of Sicily, to Dr. Chiara Montaldo, a coordinator with Doctors Without Borders in Pozzallo, Sicily, Italy, providing medical and psychological care to migrants and refugees rescued from boats in the Mediterranean. She recently wrote a piece for The Guardian called, We See More and More Unaccompanied Children on Migrant Boats. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Dr. Montaldo. Describe what is happening in just your town alone, in Pozzallo, where you're working. Yes, uh, good afternoon. What is happening here? We are receiving um, migrants since uh, almost two years now. And uh, honestly, the condition of the people we receive are uh, worse and worse, not so much for the travel in the, in the sea, but really for the condition in, uh, in Libya, in all the migration way before to come here. Uh, and uh, the main uh, point where they are now victim of violence is for sure Libya where uh, all the people that we talk with, they really tell, tell us that now is really the hell. This is the word that they often use to describe Libya, is the hell. There is no uh, security. Uh, many people have been really tortured or uh, have been beaten. Uh, they come with uh, wounds and uh, burns. Many women, but also many men are raped. So uh, now what we see, unfortunately, is the, are the consequences of the uh, worsening of the situation in Libya. This is clear. You uh, retweeted someone writing, we are alive only because we are not dead. Dr. Montaldo, yeah. explain. Yeah, uh, most of the people that we are receiving now are really escaping from death. So why there is the life in the sea? They know very well now that uh, uh, that the sea is like a Russian roulette, so they can die. They know because now there are more and more uh, shipwreck and tragedies in the sea. But still, they come, they they keep coming. Why? Because uh, their condition in their own countries are worsening. First of all, sea. Syria, of course, but not only Syria, Eritrea, Somalia, Nigeria. So all these people are really escaping from a situation where the risk of life is really high, higher than the, the trip in the sea. So that's why they keep coming. Not only this, because actually we receive people from, from many different nationalities, but many of them, they were already living in Libya, and now, as I told you, the situation is always worse and worse. So um, all these people, really, most of them, they come because they don't have choice, and especially because they don't have other alternatives to this trip in the sea. So um, unfortunately, some of them, they could uh, afford to, to, to buy a ticket uh, if they, they could, but uh, there is no possibility, because there are no legal way in this moment allowing them to reach safely Europe or anyway a safe place. East Dr. Montaldo, that you wrote in The Guardian, you write of the chemical burns on the people, especially who are in the hold of boats. And you write about um, how the lighter-skinned immigrants will be above, and the darker-skinned immigrants, for example, from Africa, are below, where they're more likely to get burned, because the immigrants fear that if darker-skinned people are seen, they're more likely to be turned away. Yeah. Yeah, the chemical burn are symptoms that we see quite often in some type of landing. It means uh, whenever the boat has some problem of um, fuel uh, leaking. So sometimes the fuel come out and uh, because they are seat all in the boat, especially in, in the lower part of the body, the legs, and the, uh, they, they have this really burn, like like a fire burn, but they are uh, caused by the fuel. And these, uh, sometimes they are really severe. Sometimes we need to admit them. Sometimes we can uh, uh, treat them uh, at the first reception center. Uh, 
Uh, and is it true that, uh, unfortunately, even in, in the boat, there is a kind of uh, hierarchy? Uh, all of them, unfortunately, are desperate, but uh, uh, there is a kind of uh, different kind of uh, despair, because, unfortunately, even in the boat, there is a first and second class, if we can say like that. And so the last of the chain, uh, often they, they have the worst places, the places more dangerous. And we see more and more people who died because they are in the, they stay in the lower part of the boat, which is normally the most, the most dangerous, because they cannot breathe. Sometimes uh, the, the fuel is there, and the gas of the boat, they are there. So, for example, two days ago, one of our team uh, received people survived from this tragedy. Fifty people died because they were in the lower part of the boat and they were probably without oxygen and, and they died. Unfortunately, in these kind of tragedies, the people of the, in the boat, maybe like yesterday, 400 people in the boat, uh, they fight for life. This is normal. This situation put them in a situation where even in, in between them, sometimes there are tension and uh, everybody try to, to save their own life. What? is your message for Europeans who say, we have too many problems of our own, we have to send these people back, Dr. Montalda? Honestly, I think that um, in front of what we are facing now, people dying, people without alternative, I think that this discussion to uh, send them back, uh, to block our borders, are really, for me, they are... Uh, <laughs> We should not discuss about this. We should discuss how to help people who are who is trying now to save their life. How can we still be here asking ourselves, uh, should we block them or should not? How can we still be here to think how to protect ourselves? I think that all our discussion are to protect ourselves, but for me and for my organization, the priority is not protect ourselves, to is not protect our borders, but to help people who are dying and they will continue to die if we don't do anything. And our fences, our barriers and our border are the cause of many of these deaths. The issue of what people should be called aside, of course, from simply human beings and people, migrants, refugees, what do they prefer? And do you think they should be granted political asylum? So what we, what I think and what we think is that uh, we prefer to call always the people people, human being, because for us what is important is to provide the, the care of the people in need whoever they are, if they are uh, refugees, if they are uh, whoever they are. So we always prefer to call people people, human beings. Then, of course, there are differences, because some of them, uh, they escape from the war, some of them, they escape from extreme poverty, some of them, they are victim of trafficking. So there are many, many different uh, people and many different reasons uh, for which people are escaping now. But for us, this doesn't matter. These, for us, are human beings in need, in extreme need. Human beings escaping from uh, death very often or anyway from very dangerous situation. For, so, yes, we always prefer to call them human beings. 